Good tidings, all you beautiful individuals, you better believe it is Lee Guy Mike here again. Mark here with you for an absolutely jam-packed little bit of weekend recap. We got three zeros all over the place, all these different regions, and we got records not being broken, but smashed in multiple regions. And we begin with, I don't even know what records were broken in this BLG Weibo Game 3, but there had to be multiple because this is... The bloodiest, skirmish-intensive, most insane game that I've seen in a long time in the LPL. We had 25 kills at 14 minutes. Didn't matter that it was going to be a sweep away, Bo Gaming. Not going quiet into the night against BLG, that's for sure. That game for, yes, very much this do-or-die, everything Helm's Deep type of moment for Weibo. And it comes up short. It ends up being extinguished by the flames of BLG and BLG with a dominant win in the LPL once again. And uh, 35 kills in 20, 34 kills in 25 minutes. BLG alone ripping through that kill per game. We had two kills per minute average throughout a game. Like the number of times that's happened in a game has got to be less than five. It has to be because I know that the times that were barely above the kill a minute pace, those are the games that are insane because you can barely catch your breath. You can barely have a time to go to a little replay of something happening before it happens again. Someone else is getting killed. Some other advantage is happening all over the place. Uh, a, a fun game three to end what was eventually kind of a disappointing series in the sense of you hope for some of that Weibo magic, the magic that had led them to that point in the playoffs to show up against BLG seemed like it was a, an immovable object, the way that BLG was in their path. But what a, what a statement debut in the playoffs for them to kind of make sure that everybody else in the LPL remembers. We're the defending champs, we're sitting atop this throne, and since Wei has come into the lineup, we are in the finest form we've been in, in an insane already 2024. In an LPL where we've had so many situations of fraud watch type of things and up and downs all across the leaderboard and ladder, it is very refreshing to get BLG to come out here and put that stamp back on to say, look, playoffs might not have gone the way everyone has thought it was going to play out type of thing. But we are that consistent. We are that top team of the LPL. Here's your proof of it. And not to be outdone the other top dogs in the lpl the main rivals to blg top esports uh making well they have already played a series against anyone's legend but matching up against the higher seeded lng and okay they didn't do some record setting bloodthirsty games but it was a 3-0 nonetheless lng had pretty good early games across all three of these games but it's again a series where you see the team fighting and the synergy for top esports is unmatched. The coordination and chemistry are the other words that I'm going to use for it and how I would qualify this up for top esports and what they did in this series because certainly you see the sweep, you see the end results of some of these games and you might have thought that oh this is overwhelming in favor of top esports but it's good to mention out that yes the early games relatively fine, relatively okay for LNG as soon as the team fighting machine as soon as the objectives really became the goal for top esports they found a way to get that chemistry rolling and pick up kill after kill specifically i'm talking about that top and jungle synergy your boys 369 and tian yes 369 and tian are the two major players in this series for top esports that should be scary for everybody else because if those two are the ones driving the engine at this point you just wait until the catalyst kicks in of your boy Jackie Love in the bottom lane. And it was really a pick specifically for 369 in that Mordekaiser in games one and two. First, he's uh, locking up Weiwei Wei to steal a Baron out of them. And then he's locking up an insanely fed Gala's Zaya that was 3-0 at one point. Just totally isolating them in fights to get uh, TES back in the driver's seat. But yeah. How about Tian playing some Lilia, Diana, and the Ivern? We've seen Tian throughout this split now excel and carry TES on both supportive or tanks like Sejuani, Ivern, and then on these more carry AP junglers. I'm somewhat scared because the last time that we have ever seen Tian start to really push the limits of what people expect out of him as a player, 
We got the unfortunate run for FPX. Uh, not at the, the world's world buff, Tian. And, T and where Tian looked as bad as we've almost ever seen him look in his career. So that is where I'm a little bit scared of it because we're approaching that territory of how he's playing leading up to the world championship and how he's contributing for top esports. A uh, quick shout out to the Mordekaiser pick because I thought it's been interesting the way it's kind of evolved over uh, the time since we've had the rework where it originally became, yeah, take this super fed carry away from a team fight. You're going to 1v1 take him out and you're going to get this crazy stat advantage coming out of it. And then you're the raid boss for the rest of the team fight type of thing. Then it became a, okay, we'll remove this person away from a team fight because we don't want this affecting the team fight, blah, blah, blah. Now it's just as simple as, oh, we want this thing? You guys have this guy to secure it? He's not there anymore. He's gone. He's in the death room with Mordekaiser. Simple things like that. And we were actually seeing 369 land some of the skill shots for Mordekaiser. So often you see them get pulled into the death realm and everyone's just running around missing abilities. But he was locking it down and locking down the 304 TES. We wrapped up the regular season in the LCK. So I, I think it's time. Let's just, we look at the standings and go, okay, what were the biggest surprises of this LCK run in summer? And shockingly, it's right at the top of the standings is probably number one, not Gen G being number one, not Gen G going 17 and one again, but breaking their own record in terms of game score plus 32 on this season, rocking a 35 and three overall record. That is absolutely disgusting. Insane, insane, because you can look at that LCK uh, standings and you can take your pick. You can go down to the bottom and start looking at teams like, you know, KDF and Fearx and start talking about the progress or where they've made good strides and where they're looking for the future type of thing in the LCK. You can have a conversation about T1 and the whole ups and downs that they've gone through, the DD, DD, DDoS attacks, you know, not getting a break with EWC, all sorts of things, and still, finding that that tenacity, finding some skill to put them in the position that they are in in the LCK. Conversation about D plus Kia and Hanwha life, leapfrogging around T1, being more so in that type of zone between them and the Gen G. And then Gen G being even better than they were last time around, record-breaking performances. That's gotta be the story for me. And one of the key differences is you saw last year was the rookie pays edition now we are getting the one year plus edition of pays and that jump up in performance those upgrades that they made this year that is the key in why you're seeing this record be broken once again and we saw that level up kind of change at msi where we were talking about pays and lehens really stepping up and now 1100 player of the game points you're looking at the player of the split for pays atop the table just ahead of his buddy canyon ahead of showmaker so absolutely an incredibly bounce back split uh for pays kind of ascending right back into that best adc in the lck conversation probably gonna have the entire Gen G lineup being that first team all pro which we're accustomed to seeing uh but yeah the other surprise is of course t1 finishing fourth we're not We've seen them finish, I think, fifth in summer last year, where they ended up then winning the world championship. But a lot of different avenues for that. I'm more looking to the impressive level up for a squad like D+, where they've earned that top three status. And I think one of the important things to look at with D+, and especially to get into this type of territory, you could make some type of statement about them, you know, kind of being buckled up right behind T1 type of thing understandable could could make that type of jump could see that type of thing happening but being where they are having the change that they had to make with lucid stepping up into the roster even with all the hype around him filling in those shoes of canyon filling in the shoes not just the canyon but what canyon built with showmaker specifically as that iconic player for uh, d plus kia seeing the way that those two have played the way things have gone this split king and looking a lot more like his world championship self going down to the bottom lane and seeing the growth from aiming and the stability that he has been providing for this team yes you can take this one as one of your ones it's 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 a little unfair that gets overshadowed by just the goliath that is gen g and the records that they've broken once again and obviously, Genji going to be the massive favorites throughout this playoff run in the LCK. D plus should be big favorites and hope they show up in that first round matchup now against Fear X. 
But how about T1KT Telecom War in the opening round of playoffs? You lose that, you're out. You're not in the loser's bracket yet. You're sitting in the regional gauntlets hoping to book your ticket at Worlds there. Oh man, this is scary. This is just, that's the scary matchup for either one of these squads, really, regardless of who you think is the favorite type of one. Because even if you got a favorite, it's close enough that this is gonna be a series. You better believe that one. You better have that one booked in the way that both of these squads are gonna be fighting for what is at stake. Not just, of course, continuing that LCK summer playoff journey, but it is avoiding that got early, early bounce out to the gauntlet type of one. When you're talking about a T1, talking about KT, one of these teams that has to be aware that they are in that danger zone for that gauntlet trip. Jump in on that 3-0 stomp train was also the LCS over the weekend. And not surprising that it happened there. A little surprising that it happened in the 100 Thieves Dignitas series. And it truly looks like the mojo is back for the 100T. Boys, you got Sniper emoting right to the camera. Give me more camera time for this guy. And this team has looked so much better since Tomo stepped into that starting line. Which, by the way, is uh, shameful from Riot that they're going to change up that emote. That emote has got a lot of good toxic energy that we want out there on the Rift. Have some fun with it, those type of type of, type of memes. That's the type of thing with these emotes coming through from these teams. Have that identity. It's entertainment. That's what we're in. That's the business. That's how it's got to be. And in 100 Thieves, they certainly entertained on the weekend for their fans. It was a dominant 100% full throttle all the way through from them. And you got to see everything that you wanted to see from 100 Thieves. You can look down into the bottom lane and talk about how good they did and how much they smashed their competition. You can go to General Sniper, as you talked about, in the top side, flashing those emotes, showing us that skill, showing us a little bit of that, uh, you know, extra that we talk about so much with him and so much about the hype that built up before his start here in the LCS, seeing it come through in the playoffs, that's a big time moment. And uh, for Dignitas, I mean, it's it's just never fully clicked. They were only able to really beat some of the weaker teams in that regular season. Obviously, they still have a chance in losers, but you combine that with how NRG showed a little bit of life, the only like non-sweep basically the whole weekend is NRG picking up a game against FlyQuest. They also had a solid start in game four, so there were signs of life. Obviously, they were still outmatched by FlyQuest, and specifically, Bwipo on the day was extra wide with the Darius and Volibear picks. <laughs> and uh, everyone loves it. He's having uh, the extra wide reactions out there on the cameras for the LCS with those performances. Uh, it, it, crazy series, really, in the sense of what you got from NRG to show just a little, a slight glimpse of the sunlight that you know that these players can show, can provide and grow, only to be met with the full force of the rest of FlyQuest and certainly some mistakes as well from NRG to, to just top it all off is the way that you can look at this series. You go into that next one, looking at that Dignitas NRG type of one as you laid out and Yes, there's enough from NRG that you do get that uh, edge against Dignitas. I don't think anybody is necessarily excited about seeing this one uh, buckled in with the, the next two rounds, that with the next series that we're going to be able to see, including a Team Liquid and a Cloud9. It's, that matchup feels like when you do a fantasy league and you have the matchup for who's not going to finish last, right? You don't want to be the ultimate stinker. That feels like what we're getting out of the Dig NRG. I mean, has there been a more drastic trajectory than Palafox's career? You go back to last year, he's ascended to Palafaker, maybe the best mid in the LCS. And in 2024, you're going, who is this guy and why is he starting? Some of the issues that you're seeing with NRG, yes, you can absolutely, you know, pin down on the individual player, person making that type of mistake, making that call, making that choice, the execution on it, whatever. I think clearly to have it happen to almost all five members of this team to see such a drastic drop off, it is additional factors. And that is additional outside factors that the organization has to be in control of. We knew that these things changed uh, coming into this year, you know, the, the general manager wasn't there. Uh, certain coaching returns were not made through this roster. Whatever combination of it was, that was a big part of how they were able to be as prepared, able to execute on the day clearly with these players, with any type of strategy or anything, because that does not exist for this year's edition of NRG. 
Yeah, somehow the synergy and magic that got them uh, to a title last year has completely been gone. We've been waiting for it to come back, but it has not been the case throughout all of 2024. Some of the LCS matches were definitely uh, a little bit sore on the eyes, but what we got in the LEC pair of 3-0s this weekend, ah, really left scratch in your head. Both Giant X and SK, I was left going, these are playoff teams? They're in the playoffs right now? Giant X were the even more egregious ones because some of these dives looked straight out of 2016 Renegades era from the LCS, and that's not good. I'll be, I'll be honest with you, the LCS, uh, we might like to upsell it a little bit, but it was very much a, a garage sale type of weekend. It's, the, it's you know, some trash, some leftovers. Maybe you find that gem that, you know, someone's taken out, whatever. The LEC was straight on dumpster diving. You know, you might find yourself a real treat, but you are getting deep down and dirty in it. You're going to need that shower afterwards. That's how you felt watching these matchups because nothing really surprised you out of them and none of it made you feel good about the loser or the winner in any of these situations that you were coming out of. I think one of the worst ones has got to be that G2 Giant X series. That was all over the place. I'm just waiting for the comms on that one because I guarantee oh. you everybody on G2 is laughing at what Giant X is doing. What are these guys doing? They're trolling. They were trolling. It, it was trolling. It was trolling out there. Even even uh, our, our guy on Giant X and the one positive I think you can really take away from this whole year is Giant X in Jackie's in the mid lane. Not the best from him either. I think he got, he, you know, part of it is, is you know, individually you're in on that, yes. And part of it is, well, it's a group project um, signed in on this one and I'm going in with it. Not good, not and good. The other series wasn't that much better. BDS versus SK, okay. SK had angles in these early games where they were ahead, but they were throwing these games. And I can't believe that this was an eight and one squad in round robin. Uh, really what that does is show how kind of meaningless that first round is in this format for the LEC because since then, summer playoffs and now season finals, they haven't even looked like a playoff team. This is what we were worried about with a squad like SK and, and you can kind of throw whoever else around the LEC, Giant X, Mad Lines, Koi, you know, BDS has kind of escaped this type of territory. But we talk about them saying, OK, we've seen a little bit of mojo, a little bit of juice. You've picked up some W's up there through the LEC regular season. Are you going to be a real contender when we get to a best of series, when it really matters, when you're put up against the classic titans of a fanatic, of a G2? Can you get it done? Can you prove, yes, these wins are for real and they matter when we move on through the LEC? We saw last year, the answer was no, it didn't matter. We flundered, we floundered, we didn't get it done when it mattered. And we hope that this year was going to be different and especially combined with some of the struggles that we saw from a G2, from Fnatic, maybe necessarily always being in that top position. This looked like the open territory for someone like SK to sweep on in, Giant X, grab that spot and be a real contender in these LEC playoffs. Uh-uh, anything but a contender, a complete pretender in these series. Yeah, and especially with the perennial heavy hitters in the LEC looking so vulnerable and weak at times, seeing these, you know, Potential contending squads show up in the worst way possible really only makes you think even less of the LEC right now. Now, we still got time for things to level up. At least G2 showed up and played through the motions and completely dominated. And now we get a matchup. Hopefully, these last four squads, the G2 BDS and the MDK Fnatic winners bracket, you get to see some higher level gameplay out of these squads. Yeah, that, that's certainly got to be the hope. I think one of the other ones, clearly kind of the feeling and, and result of these poor performances in these playoffs, uh, you know, matches coming across, almost feels worthless to have the LEC finals into this type of format and the way that it goes. Why not just uh, reshape it into something where you can have this one-for-all event where it really is one-for-all. It's one and done. You keep that momentum and energy all contained in this we went from, you know, nothing into this one. And how do you have any type of momentum into the next matches after what we saw this past weekend from the LEC? How are you supposed to come back and say, yeah, give me more of that. That's going to be my entertainment. When you compare it to what you can get from the LPL, the LCK, heck now, even the LCS, you throw in 
Heck, we now got Kedro. We got T Tyler One uh, co-streaming the LCS. It's perfect. What reason is for the LEC to move into this type of format, this type of stagnation, and pause and start? And if you you start on something really bad, well, how do you keep building off of that? That's the LEC right now, and the way that this summer grand summer final format has worked out to be. I'm just glad it's the last time we're going to be getting this format like that as 2025 comes in and it'll be kind of the new look stuff for all these different regions because there were goods but more bads in this format change uh, for the LEC. Other real quick match that was an absolute banger, T1 Academy. Challenger scene kicking off their playoffs if you weren't paying attention. Uh, remember we were hyped about T1 Academy, and then they proceeded to lose seven series in a row. They slump into that final playoff seed in the sixth spot and proceed to reverse sweep in the most dramatic fashion, Fear X, who were the three seed heading into playoffs. I forgot about my guy, my goat, Poe B, stepping up for the boys. Yes, oh, holy cow, what a, this is a fun one. If, if you're, if you got any type of interest, you got any type of fandom for T1 or Reckless even, whatever, save it. Watch that series on your own type of thing. But this was a heck of a blast. Full, yes, silver scrapes all the way through. And yes, it was finally the rebound for this T1 Academy squad that had, had such an abysmal stretch from having such a promising stretch at the early points of this one that built up that conversation that Aaron was talking about. Heck, that was at the point we were looking at the Academy squad and we were looking at the main squad for T1 and saying, maybe give them a break, maybe give them a little bit of a rest, throw some of these Academy boys up there and see what they can do in this situation. Nothing happened. Everything was paused, thankfully. everything was smooth. <laughs> and, and, and we learned very quickly that yes, maybe thankfully that wasn't the move that was going on behind the scenes. And we get this playoff series, and good to see. These bounce backs all across from the T1 members, of course, Poby, as I'm talking about. But I think mostly the people's attention will be on Smash and Reckless down in the bottom lane, and them returning more so to a form and getting that pressure and getting that explosive power that you wanted to see from that duo. Seven losses in a row, down 0-2. To bounce back, that's some serious mental fortitude. So shout out to Reckless and the boys over there at T1. But that is it today for League Unlocked.